Hello and welcome to another episode of The Grind. My name is Arnell Alisea with Visionary Business Development and I'm here with... Shell Burke with Possibly. And we are on episode six. It feels like just yesterday that we started this thing, but it also feels like a million years ago because we've been locked inside of our houses. Uh, how's everything going with you? Good. I'm ready to travel. I'm actually starting to travel. So I'm going <laughs> to Excellent, excellent, excellent. Well, well, I am definitely uh, taking this time to to get my house uh, in order. So we're just going to plunge right into it. Um, so obviously, we uh, we have a lot of different things going on, uh, both socially and also from from a, a, a health pandemic standpoint. So today we're going to talk a little bit about resilience leadership during uh, uh, during disruptive times. And specifically, we're going to address, uh, be talking about an article called How Do You Build Trust During a Crisis, which is a rootinc.com article written by Jim Howden. And it's actually an article on the annual Edelman Trust Barometer Study. And the study found that 38% of people believe businesses are not doing well at putting people before profits. And another 39, uh, 39% are feeling that businesses aren't doing well at protecting their employees' financial well-being and jobs. And only 29% think that the CEOs are doing well handling this pandemic. So obviously there's a lack of trust out there, right? And so we're gonna talk a little bit about leadership and what leadership can do to uh, kind of protect and build that trust uh, with uh, during this during this time, so Michelle, I'd love to ask you, right? What does building trust mean in this business environment? So, in this, in the most simple of terms, it's vulnerability and authenticity. Not necessarily in that order. <laughs> so, you know, authenticity is having the the courage to say I was wrong or I screwed up. You know, I'm working with a gal right now where. I, I didn't provide the proper context with her for her. I was moving too fast and I kept throwing stuff over the wall. Uh, and she was getting a bit frustrated and I was getting frustrated because she wasn't moving as fast as I wanted her to, but it was on me. So it's my, it, I'm, I need to be vulnerable and say, God, you know what? That's on me. I should have provided the proper context. Okay. So that's, that's one of the things. Okay. So um, now we have, you know, I, 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 it's kind of, it's kind of interesting when I think about those statistics and you have um, leaderships really between a rock and a hard place here, right? And uh, trying to make, uh, trying to make difficult decisions with full transparency is hard, right? And leaders might say, hey, how do I protect my, my employees' financial well-being and everybody's job if the decisions I might have to make to cut jobs is immediately going to under, seem to undermine that. So how do you think that leaders can actually go ahead and, you know, be authentic, be vulnerable, and while also making their employees feel a little better? Yeah, feel safe and better. Yeah. So I, there, there's a, a company, there's a few companies doing this, but the one that comes, there's one that comes to mind where they, they can't predict what's going to happen a couple months from now or six months from now. So they're having all hands conversations to say that. I don't know. We want to keep, and, and some of the dialogue has been, we want to keep everybody on staff. That is our intention. We, we've also, we, we want to protect your jobs as long as we can. We don't have an intention of laying anybody off. However, we don't know what's going to happen a few months from now. We might have to do that. But what we will do is we will continue to have this dialogue. We will continue to come to you and let you know what's happening, right? And, and so, and there's another organization locally where the president and CEO has taken a pay cut, right? That builds trust. That's putting your money where your mouth is. All right, so, kind of like, kind of like making everybody, uh, hey, listen, we're all in it together. We're all suffering together, right? Right. Right, exactly, exactly. Yeah. yeah, it's a very physical way to get empathetic. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, right. For sure. I mean, and then, as far as the vulnerability, if, if, if our leaders can, can show up 
and have the difficult conversations. There's something in this book. So it's Brene Brown's Dare to Lead. Love this book. She's, a, and there's a lot of people that love her as well, but she has something in here called the rumble. We're rumbling with authenticity. So having difficult conversations when they're uncomfortable, like the one I just, I, just an example, right? Who, what CEO and, or what, what leader wants to say, I don't know. I don't know if I can protect your job. I don't, I want to keep everybody, right? And they certainly don't want to take a pay cut. Nobody wants to do that. But I think that's, that's when you're having difficult conversations and sharing information, having the courage to tell the truth, even when it's not popular or what somebody wants to hear. Right. Absolutely. Absolutely. So is there a way that, there, that leaders can effectively protect their company financially, but instill trust that, um, that, that, uh, where people or their employees feel like they're that they're taking care of the people first before the profits, because it seems like those things would be automatically kind of like come to a head, right? And they would be diametrically opposed to each other. Yeah, I think I think it depends on how they show up as leaders. So there are organizations that that don't treat people first. That's not part of their values. That's one of mine, but that doesn't mean that everybody, every company is like that. And, and that's where values come into play. So if, if organizations have the values and then they, they hire the, the people based on the values that they've created, then you can certainly do that. I think there's a, a, another good book by Simon Sinek called Leaders Eat Last. And that's where it's on the premise where the Marines would have during chow hall, supposedly, I haven't been, I've never been a Marine, so I don't know, but you know, during chow hall, the enlisted would eat first before the officers. And so, you know, you, you take care of those people. And if you have that mindset, that long-term people first, then you will be able to maintain trust throughout your organization. Uh, keep, you might, you might, there, I think that there were, um, there was a company, I don't know which one it was, there was a company that said, they're, they're not going to give shareholder data or information as far as gains, because they don't have any. So they have neglected to, to share that information. Wow. Wow. That's significant. Now, so we've talked a lot in the past about, you know, um, how a good, how a solid corporate culture, you know, um, fair values, a fair leadership, um, uh, attentive leadership builds strong, a strong corporate culture. I think it's a, it's really important to address the fact that you can't start building trust during disruptive times, regardless of what the crisis is, you know, if it's national, if it's worldwide, or if it's local, or if it's even on just, a, just within your organization, the trust is something that has to be built over time. You're not just going to say, hey, we're having hard times. We all really got to lean on each other here. And they're going to, and people just be like, this is a change. What's the, what's the catch? What's the, what's the trick here? So I think for me, it's really important that people understand that if you are going to, um, try and build trust immediately during this t time, it may not have the same effect as if you, if, if you have already been doing that and laying the foundation and, and the framework, you know, to, so then when you're all, you all have something to lean on together, right? And I think that's, that's pretty important. Um, I want to take this time to kind of switch uh, tracks here. We've been talking a lot about leaders at this senior level, senior management level. Uh, let's go to the employees, right? So in past episodes, we've talked about employee engagement. We talked about building an amazing corporate culture. So how does that impact trust building in organizations at the employee level? Meaning, like, so help me understand what you're asking as far as the, make the connection for me. Right. Okay. So what, so we have leaders on the, on the, on, on, in the senior management level, Right, and what I'm interested in, in seeing what, uh, what what your thoughts are is we there's also leaders on an employee level, right? right? They're not necessarily leaders from the top down, but they're leaders on the same plane, right? And it's important that people gather around these these employees, these leader leader bound employees, right? And they're really like linchpins on the for the front lines, so. Uh, what can they do specifically to keep trust, build, keep building trust, and also keep morale high during these difficult times? Gotcha. Thank you, Arnell. So, 
um, one of the ways is to introduce what's called a learning loop. And there, there's a lot of different terms for this. So there, it, it, in IT, 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 there's a retrospective project management. It's known as lessons learned. So it's, it's, it's coming together as a team, regardless of whether the, the leaders or the CEOs are, are, are part of this process. They, they don't have to be. You can do this in operations, in a project. You can do it during a crisis. And, and ask these three questions, you know, what went well? What went wrong? What can we do better? What can we improve? And that builds a ton of trust. I, you know, I, I actually talked with a client or the potential client um, here recently about her wanting to improve the organization and what they can do as teachers, right? That's huge, right? And, and they can start making strides by asking those questions now so that they have the data. And then there are some things that they'll be empowered to do coupled with building trust as a group. That's awesome. That's excellent. So we actually have to wrap up. So beautiful timing as well, as always. Um, so any quickly, very last thoughts, about 20 seconds. Uh, I would just say pick up this book and and she and she and or read some of her TED talks or, or listen to some of her TED talks rather. <laughs> All right, okay. So we have Michelle from Bossibly. I'm Arnell from Visionary Business Development, and this is the grind. And we are going to sign off. I hope this one was uh, was impactful for you. Uh, give us comments. Let us know if you want to listen to uh, if you want us to talk about certain things in the future. And other than that, we'll see you next month. Bye. Later. Bye. All right.